Welcome back to the channel. So this is the second part of the Italieri Tamiya Crusader build, uh, Crusader Mark III. And um, if you haven't seen the first part, is in the description box below. So already painted up there with XF59, and now we're going to go over with Mr. Color 45. Now it doesn't really matter what color that is. That's what I've used. It's really just a kind of buff color, um, and we're going to use it to let some of that darker colour from below the XF59 kind of cut through a little bit and we're just going to try and blend it to get one of those light sand um, finishes. Uh, this isn't following anything specifically, it's just looking at a few pictures and thinking right well we'll go for that. So uh, that, this has got Mr. Colour levelling thinners um, added to it which is a, a very good match for these, uh, for Mr. Colour paints and Tamiya acrylic paints which a kind of a hybrid. Um, so it's a cellulose thinner, gives us a very smooth thin coat and allows us to manipulate the paint quite well. So I'm just kind of going in kind of a cloud motion, trying to let some of that paint bleed through from below and cut through the uh, lighter colour that's above. And then once that's done, it's time to sort out the wheels and tracks. That was very simple, just brush painted around the tyres there, uh, as I've shown in many videos before, and painted the tracks. Uh, the track colour, I think, that you get from Ammo acrylic paints. Started using some of the uh, acrylic paints from Ammo, they're very useful. Uh, and now we're going on with the Ammo enamel track wash, which, uh, funny enough, is going to be a wash that we apply to the tracks. Go on over that. Um, I go on quite heavy, really, and then and kind of wick it back with some uh, straight thinners afterwards. And then once that's done, I'm going to go on with this dry light soil now as well, which is a, a, a textured enamel paste, I guess, is the way to describe it, uh, which is from Ammo. And this just gives us some of that texture and, and a bit of the something to bite into as we go forward. So it's just giving us a base, really. Um, it's not doing any, any more or, or less than that. Um, this isn't the final colour. We don't really want this to appear on the end of the model. And I wouldn't be particularly happy applying that straight on and saying, oh, look, there's the mud on. It doesn't really look like what we want to do. You can see the array of enamel washes I had by the side there. And first off, we've got a wash for uh, German dark yellow. Uh, so we can't use that on this one. Of course we can. Um, it's just for sandy coloured soils. And um, cursed soil there is another enamel wash that's quite good for adding a lot of this uh, interest. We've got light dust as well, which is another one of the nature... Uh, effects ones then we've got a panel line wash as well designed for airplanes it's just they're just enamel washes don't don't worry for, about what the label says they're used for um there's another couple as well we've also got airfield dust which is a nice light dusty deserty dare i say um pigment and then we've got some rain marks and some african pigments as well which is um a little bit oh yeah you, ak works with our ammo products if you if you ever wondered don't, don't, don't worry too much. Um, now, one thing to bear in mind, I was using a hairdryer extensively here, and you may find, see that the tracks are rather wavy. Um, that's the heat is, uh, is conformed them to sink a little bit. So uh, that's what's done that. So just be careful if you're using a hairdryer. I've gone a bit too uh, vigorous with it. But using all of the um, effects that we've done in many videos before, just showing you how I've gone through and done a kind of, started to do a pin wash using the uh, dark 
uh, wash that's meant for um, it's designed for German colours. This is very much a Dunkel Gelb sort of colour. Um, so we're going on over all the raised detail, just very um, specifically. We're not doing a wash. Uh, we actually want to pick out the uh, the points that we want to show. And then we just clean them up with neat thinners at the end. Um, so that's how we do a pin wash. I'll go ahead now and show you that, me doing that. Not exhaustively, but, uh, you know, just showing you the technique. Because it's not always shown. Some people say we'll do a pin wash, and then it can be a bit vague as to what they mean. It is put it on as neatly as you can, and then take off any of the bits you don't like once it's dried. That's really what it is, and it, it's very easy to plaster the model with a wash, and it'll do all of this, but it will get everything else as well. And this is just a sort of cleaner technique, a, a better way to go about certain aspects of uh, armor weathering. And then once we're happy with that, this is the part now where we actually go on and start taking bits of it off where we don't want it to be. So you've got a uh, kitchen roll where you can wick off the brush quite nicely and you just make sure that the brush is loaded with thinners, not too much. It's, it's not like so sopping wet with thinners, but it needs to be moist with thinners and um, you don't want too much of the thinner mixed with the enamel wash that you're taking off. So that's what you're trying to wick away. You really want to be going back in with a clean brush. Otherwise, you'll tend to just push it all around and do the opposite of what you were trying to do in the first place. And then when we're happy with that and we've gone around um, most of the definition, you can start to see that the tank kind of comes to life a little bit. It's showing all of the bolts and the recesses and the raised areas. So it is starting to uh, jump off the page, as it were, if you think of it like that. It, it's looking more than just a basic sandy coloured tank. There's a little bit more grit and grime and, and definition there, which is what we want to bring out. We're going to go ahead and try and bring that out of the road wheels now as well, which are looking a little bit uh, basic. And for that, it's going to be uh, a mixture of kind of... I mean, of course, this is a desert, so it's fair to say that this should all be sort of dry pigments. This is a kind of... Um, not muddy... I wouldn't say it's... If you think there's any amount of moisture of any sort or any fuel, grease, anything like that, and a tank dries through it, it's going to give sand something to stick to. And once it started to stick, it then builds up. I would think it's much more natural to have what we end up with here from a desert vehicle than something with just dry, dry dust on it. And plus, of course, it is a model. So we've got to try and um, inject some uh, interest into it as well. If it is, you know, desert tanks can be a little bit tricky to pull off sometimes. They can end up looking a little bit muted. So um, we're going to use a bit of artistic license as well. So this is just the cursed soil I'm going on with now.
once we've got all of that nicely kicked up the sides and just kind of looking natural. You've always got to keep the idea of everything being quite natural. We'll then move on to the next step, which is now adding one of these Pacific Dust panel line washes. Again, anything you've got in your arsenal, anything that's sandy coloured in the right kind of uh, um, shade and adding interest so the, it's all about the layers is what we're trying to build up we're trying to build up different layers of different colors and that will add depth so this is just another one of those colors that will then go on and add different marks so we'll we'll go over some and we'll go around others um, i'm obviously going over the tires there you might want to leave the tires a bit more it's up to you you can do whatever you like with your model um I, I, this is always this is being applied from up the sand shields down to the tracks so that's one thing to bear in mind And now it's on with another layer. Uh, this is a different colour of the, the enamel washes there as well. I can't quite see it, it's out of camera, but it's just a lighter coloured one. Um, probably the AK Airfield one by the looks of it. And again, just going on, I've decided that this is going to sit in the, uh, in the kind of rims of the wheels. So that's what we're going with there. And now we've got the light dust uh, wash as well, so we're going to go on with that. Same again. Just pick out places you want to go. Uh, in between all of this, I'm using the hairdryer to just um, get us back to a kind of clean slate, as it were, uh, meaning that the, the enamel before is dry, otherwise you're going to be mixing it all together and you're going to be losing the effect that we're going for, which is that continuous layering up of products or colours, doesn't need to be products, this could be uh, all the same oils that you make your own mixes from. Um, you layer it up and that gives you the depth and it starts to create things naturally. You get a tiny bit of blending but you get um, differences all the way through and that is what makes for an exciting visual appearance when it comes to a model. Then once we're happy with that, it's time, if you want to, to start applying some pigments. Now again, you want to make sure that everything is dry from the 
the processes that you've done before, which a hairdryer can help you along the way with that. And um, this is not plastering on pigments as much as it looks like I'm ju- I know they're not going to stick so I'm rubbing them in to try and get them to bite and I'm going to knock quite a lot of this off and then more so go in with a, an airbrush with obviously straight air and then blast a bit out of it as well so uh, that I, I only just want a dusty feel it's trying to get a bit more texture back now which will now sit in different areas which is um, that the original one that we put on with the enamel mud didn't sit so it's just adding a bit more um, interest and again now we're going on with neat thinners to try and stick some of those pigments in places also to rub off some of uh, the previous steps in areas and move the pigments around as well so it all just helps it looks a bit messy but again you wait until it dries and you'll start to see what happens again And now we've got rain marks going on. Um, now these are quite good for cutting through some previous steps. Um, and you can you should be able to see there now on the sand shields where we're getting about four or five colours showing up that are all very subtle. And that's that's the aim of this really. And now these rain marks are just going on the top there, and they should cut through some nice um, lighter sort of streaks. So we'll use now thinners and pull them down with a wide brush. And this is a damp brush, you know, it's barely, it's not wet really, it wouldn't leave any residue on your your hand, for instance, but it's enough to pull that enamel, enamel down. And uh, these are all straight vertical lines we're going down here. I'm trying to blend that in, get it to cut through a little bit, it's going to blend with some of it as well. It's going to give us a really nice effect. Adding more depth. And now uh, I want to cut back through with some cursed soil again. So I'm going to add a bit more going back through it. And these are coming on now in the form of splashes. So cocktail stick and, an, and your brush of choice. Um, less is more here. And then just let that flick on up through. And this is adding yet another layer of interest. Um, which I keep saying, but it is, it's the important thing. This is what we're doing. This is the whole point of why we're here, is to add depth and interest. And that comes from layering up in a number of ways. Um, you may think this is quite muddy, again, for the desert, so just tone it down a little bit if this isn't what you want. Um, I quite like the idea of this. I think this would have happened um, more often than you perhaps would think logically, just by thinking about it. These are dusty areas with hard roads but you know there's a lot of um areas where moisture can be added in you only need a touch and you think about grease and that you know it does happen so now we're just going to add a little bit more um of something around the upper hole so to try and capture some dust that will have settled into recesses and corners i'm going around with some of the same pigment applying it in certain areas flat spots or in and around areas where i think it could get caught up we're going to apply it loose work on around and then hit that with neat thinners
So once you're happy with it all being applied in areas that you want and you want it to stay there, then you just run on around with neat thinners and wet it like this. It does go this sort of horrible kind of brown colour and it looks terrible. Uh, let it dry off, let it wick away, uh, let it do it all naturally. Wouldn't use the hairdryer here, obviously, it'll blow it all off. And you'll find that as it starts to settle, this is a good thing to do sort of towards the end of the session. So you leave it overnight, you can come back, see what it's like, address it, assess it, etc. Anything you don't like, it's very easy to remove. And uh, obviously don't forget to get these areas like in this little recess in between the fenders and the hole here. This would be obviously caked in uh, dust and debris. Then it's on to finishing touches. So I've got a couple of aerials put in there with some plastic rod. Uh, just going to paint them black now uh, with some acrylic paint. Looks a bit messy, but it's because it's watered down and the, sh and the rod is white. So, you know, it doesn't doesn't cover it quite that well. It looks quite thick and blobby, but it's not. It, it, it'll all just dry off once the um, paint has a chance to dry. It will shrink back and you won't get all of this lumpiness that you'll see there. Um, and that brings this to a, a, a close. So nice and simple. I think it's um, resulted in an interesting look for a, for a desert vehicle. And um, hopefully it's done this uh, old kit justice. So uh, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any comments, let me know in the uh, comments down below. If you want to see part one of the actual build of this, it's in the description below. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.